were having that treatment and you, you were in the hospital, what, mm -hmm. how did you feel emotionally going through that? And I guess having been through it before to mm -hmm. some extent, um, you know, was it different? How did you feel mm -hmm. or were you still taking it one step at a time? Mm. I guess even after I relapsed, I still sort of had that um, philosophy, that mentality of uh, let's see what happens. I'm not going to worry about what's happening tomorrow. I just need to get through the treatment. Mm. And if something goes wrong, I'll deal with it when it goes wrong. Um, I, I suppose in, in some ways it, it almost felt as though, right, okay, yeah, the, the leukemia has sort of won this small um, battle, mm. but there's a bigger war going on here, if you, yeah. Uh, and yeah, so you might have managed to come back, but we've got a new approach. So um, I think I was still always sort of positive, always optimistic about what might happen because I think for me, as long as there was any hope, mm. then I could cling on to that. It could be the sort of tiniest shred of hope. Yeah. But as long as there was an option, then I was happy because I could try that option. I could go ahead with it. Um, and if that option failed, is there another option? Right. That would be my first question. And um, while there was another option, I was happy. I'm here, I'm alive, let's deal with it. I, I never wanted to stop living, I suppose. Um, uh, I didn't want to put my life on pause, even though in many ways, logistically, it was on, on mm -hmm. pause. Um, for me, life was too important to put on pause. Like, I, I wanted to make the most of every day with my wife. I wanted to make the most of um, being alive. Um, as I say, even if I was hooked up in hospital, yeah. so ha yeah, just trying to find little little things every day to to make me happy, and um, uh, I was helped by that in having lots of support, lots of, lots of family friends who were absolutely brilliant. Um, even though generally I, I I like to think of myself as quite a big thinker, you know, thinking <laughs> about the great issues of life, but in that situation. It's too much, I think, mm. and and so I was focused on actually, what about the little things? And, yeah, well, and your world becomes smaller. Yeah, in a way, your world becomes it? smaller, and, but that's not a bad thing because yeah. actually, little things can transform your life and can can transform your um, emotions. They can really, um, yeah, make you happy. I, I, I always my my theory was always the bacon theory, which was that I might be in hospital, I might be ill. But I'm eating a bacon sandwich, so <laughs> life is brilliant. Yeah, well, what can I complain about? And so, what do you think? What were some of the most helpful things that people did for you? Like maybe your friends or your family or your wife or whatever. Mm -hmm. What what really helped you get through that? Mm. Mm. I think mm, what helped me get through the most. I think that because for me, one of the biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. Um, the biggest challenge was um, how to help my wife, how mm. to help her through things. So, so my big concerns were that she was okay, mm -hmm. and um, so for me, the best things people could do were, were to help her. Um, okay. So, where, while I was in hospital, she was still working. She had a full time job, um, uh, but her. Um, her colleagues uh, helped her company uh, uh, where she was working um, were very good at letting her have the time she needed and then friends were brilliant at offering um, to take her to the hospital and take her home um, to do some of the cooking some of the things at home that she just yeah. didn't have time to do because she was working then she'd come straight to the hospital to be with me mm. and that was amazing because um there was only there was only so much um, practically that people could do for me yes. while I was going through sure. the treatment. I was being pretty well looked after yeah. by the medical staff, <clears throat> but Maria Christina didn't have that. Mm. She um, she went home to an empty house um, and had to deal with 
the everyday yeah. bits of life that um, uh, normally we would do together. But I wasn't there, and she was spending so much time mm. in hospital. There wasn't the time, so it was that the. I really appreciated so the So helping most. you by helping the people it, around it, you, exactly, basically. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Um, the things that I would have wanted to do for her but couldn't yeah. um, because I was, I was in hospital. So what do you think the hardest part of all of that has been, was, I suppose, like that, that whole period of time? It's difficult. It's difficult, to, it's difficult for me to define what the hardest time was because I was taking each day uh, one at a time, mm. and I was dealing with each day individually, yeah. really. So um, there were, and I suppose some days might be harder than others. But um, uh, I, I, physically, I suppose um, after the transplant, I felt pretty rough. Um, uh, also during the trial, um, it was really sort of tough going up and down. Mm. But but emotionally. Um, I I think I, I was sort of always managing to get myself up each day um, keep myself, keep my spirits up um, each day individually. So if there was a problem, I'd think, well, why? What, what am I upset about? Do I need to be upset about it now? No, because I'm here, I'm alive, mm. I'm okay, I'm dealing with things. Um, so, yeah, so, so there's nothing that really kind of jumps out right. as, as moments where I was terrified or um or yeah um I, I kind of managed I guess I was quite rigorous mm. with my philosophy of I'm here I'm dealing with it today tomorrow I'll deal with tomorrow today I'm okay 